So here is my suitcase that I'll be traveling with and it is a one of the larger suitcases uh, as you probably know there are the carry-on size and they're the kind that you can check but the check bags just so that you know check with the airline that you're traveling on because they do have restrictions for the largest size that you can carry uh, and it depends on which airline it is but uh, pretty much they're standard when you get a suitcase uh, of this size and this one as you can see kind of has this it's not really a hard shell but it's definitely not the nylon kind if you have a suitcase that you're going to be checking be sure to measure it so this suitcase is roughly let's just call it 28 with the wheels about I'd say 18 inches wide and then you have to go with the depth the depth is right around 12 inches some other things that I like to have handy when I'm packing are you know these little either Ziploc bags or in this case I have these zippered bags and I tend to label them so these are some of my zippered pouches which are one of my favorite things for uh, organizing the things in my uh, suitcase and they are kind of a, a very strong plastic and they all have zippers and they come in different sizes and I just get them at like the local office supply store but I like them because they're obviously reusable and uh, you know unlike a Ziploc bag which can tear over time they're, they're great they come in again different sizes and I try to have one dedicated to things that at the last minute if I have to I can pull it out and stick it in my carry-on because I've gone over the 50 pound limit and uh, so here's you know I just throw things in here like this one might be a good candidate for something that I could just take at the very last minute there's nothing really sharp in here but I do have heavy items and you know the mark making tools the Messermeisters my palette knives got a lot of palette knives in here and here is my oil tube ringer you know very heavy so again that's not a problem so and then also in this particular one here I've got I've labeled it too so you know it's really good to label things they, they get put back into the same container and it's easy to organize but in this little um, container I have my sharp objects so in here and I marked this with you know a label that actually says uh, you can read the label and it says exacto knife scissors blades tweezers um, also has erasers but the reason I put the erasers in here is just to keep them you know relatively clean so yeah sometimes I'll have a razor blade in here and my pair of tweezers and um, the items will change at various times but anyways that's my little box and again it's labeled and I like to put a rubber band around it just to keep things all intact so mark making materials here another thing I like to do is I like to carry some broken down boxes here that have actually been cut down so you can see when they're put together they're quite you know quite small and all you have to do when you get to the workshop is put tape along the back and then you've got instant containers to hold all your supplies when you're done with the workshop all you have to do is take the tape off and collapse them again so I have like one two three four five and you know that they're small and they don't they don't weigh a whole lot either so uh, and sometimes students will actually ship things to a workshop and if they don't need their box I might ask them if I can use it it will help you to stay organized on your tabletop I didn't mention anything about the weight of your large suitcase but for most airlines as far as I'm aware it's about a 50 pound limit and nine times out of ten I weigh this on my scale and it's like right at 49 or 50 and then when I get to the the check-in and weigh it somehow magically it, the airline adds four pounds and so then I have to take a few things out so I would just be sure that if you're going to check a bag like this be prepared to take any thing that's overweight and put it into your carry-on and another thing I do over here on this table I've kind of collected things in piles of all the things that are on my list and I do have a list kind of a checklist which is good because you can mark things off as you put them into your bag make sure you didn't forget anything now your checklist might be a supply list from the workshop you're attending or if you're an instructor then you know, I'm sure you have the things that you know you must have and I just use my list because I don't want to forget anything so 
Once I've packed everything in my suitcase, in that big suitcase, and I know that it's under 50 pounds, then I say to myself, well, what happens if this bag either gets lost or I never see it again? And you know, these are just some things that go through my head because of course we've all had luggage that didn't quite arrive when it should. Or in this case, like I'm carrying some original artwork. Now, most of these things, like my supplies, if something were to happen, uh, there's not a whole lot I can do as far as most of my supplies because I can't put them in carry-on if they're a paint. I can't put them in carry-on if they're a solvent or a sharp object, so I have no choice. But as far as original art, if you're carrying original art, I would not put that in a check bag because you might not ever see it again. Again, I hate to think that way, but it's just the reality now. You, you kind of have to realize that sometimes luggage gets lost. So um, if I ever take anything original or anything that is considered kind of valuable to me, I will put it in a container. Uh, some, you know, this is one of those zippered pouches. So there's, there's one of them. And then, you know, original artwork. And I've got, you know, smaller things in here that I just wouldn't want to get lost. So I would then put these in my, my um, carry-on, not my check bag. So it's just good to be a little bit cautious, realize that things do get lost. Um, I've had a student come to my studio and for three days she didn't have her luggage. So if there's, you know, you're kind of stuck if it's your art supplies, but for, as far as your valuables go, original artwork, it's probably a good idea to just carry that with you in your carry-on. Regarding things like, you know, Galka gel and cold wax medium and solvents, Gamzol, and I have another medium, which is Galka light. I'll be taking these with me on the plane, but in my check bags, okay? Because obviously you can't put those things in your carry-on and you might be wondering, is that okay to travel with these things? Well, it is if, and this is what I highly encourage you to do, you can see I've got these uh, safety data sheets. And if you go to Gamblin's website, or if you happen to be an acrylic artist, you could go to Golden Colors website and check out their material safety data sheets. They're almost always available with a product that you buy. Most people never see them or know about them because they don't really know that they might need them. The MSDS sheets should be accompany anything that you know, you, you think might trigger a red flag when you go through security. So I've labeled this, uh, this pouch here with Galkid Light, Gamsol, and G-Gel. And all you have to really do is make sure that inside here, you tuck away the MSDS data sheet. So these have gone uh, on many trips. <laughs> They're getting a little dirty, but I did download these off Gamblin's website. So here you can see, here's one for Gamsol which is the odorless mineral spirit. Um, it's several pages, so I stapled it together. And so that way, if a TSA agent has any questions at all, all they have to do is, you know, look at that. let them spend their time going through all this information. I love it because it's like 20 pages long and it tells them how it's just not, not a hazardous product. So just make sure you've got these tucked away with um, the appropriate uh, thing that goes with it. So this one is for Galica gel. And this one is for uh, Galkid Light. Those are all the things that are in here. Plus I've got, you know, I've got one for Cold Wax Medium as well. So I would have that in here. And again, there, there are a couple places you can get these MSDS data sheets. Uh, number one, of course, at Gamblin, gamblincolors.com. But because there were so many questions about, you know, what do you do when you travel? And can I take Gamzol? Can I take Cold Wax Medium? I also have the links in my resources section at artandsuccess.com. You simply go there, click on resources, scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says traveling with art materials. So when I pack my bag, I'm going to have my cold wax medium right here. I put my name on it and in, I'm going to probably wrap this with just stretchy plastic, but I highly recommend it for closing covers like this, going around caps of, um, if, if this were an open product, it's not an open product, but if I had a bottle like this with a cap on it, uh, a liquid paint to prevent it from, you know, it, let's say that when it's in the checked baggage, you know, due to air pressure, the top explodes, <laughs> the top comes off. And that, that has happened before. So what I'll do is I'll take some of this plastic and I'll just wrap a little bit around the tip here, this red tip, so that, and actually around this part here too, so that 
if cabin pressure somehow makes the paint want to come out of my bottle, it's protected with the plastic and then at least it's not going to get over all your other supplies. So that's if you have something liquid like this that's already opened. One of the most important things though is to never put the word paints or pigments on anything. It should always say just art supplies or Gamblin told me you could put artist colors with vegetable oil because oil paints from Gamblin, that's what they are. They are artist colors with vegetable oil. I don't think a TSA agent is gonna have a hard time if you tell them that or if you put a label on here that just says artist colors with vegetable oil. But you can also get an MSDS data sheet for um, you know, not just the Gamblin oil paints, but if you have some other brand um, and if you have acrylics, you know, that website, if it's from Golden, go to their website, get the MSDS, uh, print them out, save those um, documents because they come in handy. For artists who are traveling with, uh, let's say that you're, you know, you're traveling with things that you just don't want to bend or you want to keep them as straight as possible, what I do is I almost always have this, um, this pad here of gray palette paper. It's not so much that I can't use other kinds of palettes when I travel, but what I like about it is that it has this cardboard backing, which means that, you know, it's fairly rigid. And the reason that that's good is that on my way to the workshop, I will be putting all of my, uh, my four squares that are ready to be painted on for demos. I'll tuck them inside this gray palette and it'll keep them from, you know, bending too much. And then also, let's say that, you know, on the way back, you've got wet paintings. Like, let's say that this was a wet painting. Uh, you can put wax paper over it. You can put saran wrap over it. And, and I would definitely suggest you do that. But then you also have this where you can tuck it inside and that's further protection for it to not get paint all over your other things in your suitcase. So I'm just gonna scan over some of the things that I'm gonna be taking. Here are some texture materials that I'll be sharing with students. I will tuck that into a bag and I will label it. That's one pile here. My apron, which I sometimes forget. It's sometimes you forget the most obvious thing. So here's my apron. And here is how I would take my graphite powder. Again, I took it out of the bottle just to save weight. It's inside a small Ziploc, which is then inside of a larger Ziploc for obvious reasons. If this explodes in my suitcase, I have a major problem. I've put aside some of my mark making materials. They're gonna go into a little Ziploc bag like I showed you earlier that's labeled. And then these are my cosmetic puffs that go with the graphite powder. For uh, Some more mark making tools are here. And then I always take, you know, like some other types of things for the class to use. So these are my crepe pies. And notice the little pink bits of duct tape. Uh, that was my way for, you know, when you go to a workshop and there's a lot of people and whether you're the instructor or a student, um, you tend to share things with other people. And I, I decided to use the pink tape uh, as a way to identify things that were mine because sometimes, you know, students want to try something and, you know, it's at the end of the class, you can say, hey, does anybody have anything with the pink uh, duct tape on it? And then sure enough, you know, that's how you can make sure you get it back. Here's my little tin. It's empty now, but I've already labeled it. I take a ruler. I really like my cutting mat. And as you can see, it's underneath here. It's not a very large size. It's only 10 by about eight, eight by 10. So it's very portable, doesn't have a lot of weight. Here's my Euler boiler. I just take one and, you know, I can share it with students. Here are some RNF pigment sticks that I can take to share. A little sketchbook or notebook to take notes, although I will take a larger sketchbook. I encourage you to do that as well. Um, what else? Here are my silicone tools. I don't take that many. Just, again, it's amazing how quickly the things add up in weight. So I have to, you know, pare things down and not take as many as I obviously work with at home. Um, I do have a, a tweezer here to help with things like collage material or, uh, I don't know, sometimes there are little things that require a pair of tweezers. Now it's a sharp object, so I will be careful in how I pack this up um, as well as I take a razor blade and I'm pretty careful in how I pack that as well. 
I have my gloves in a Ziploc. I'm not going to take the whole box. It would be too heavy. I've got sheets like this. These are really for myself or for students. These are leftover scraps after I make my four square. And they're for making color swatches so that if you're working on a painting and you used uh, three colors, you can make a swatch of the three colors plus black and white as well as the mix together and you get all these wonderful colors so you can remember what your palette was for the painting that you're working on. My white artist tape, I switched over to the white versus the blue. It's a lot less annoying. My Messermeister tools, I might have already mentioned those. And I do take my, um, this is heavy. I may not take it on this trip because I think weight might be an issue, but again, there's my label with my initials. Um, this is the metal kind for squeezing out every last bit of your oil tube. And uh, this is just such a wonderful thing to have. But again, maybe for weight purposes, it won't make the cut. A pair of scissors, uh, some oil painting brushes, my palette knives. I do tend to take quite a few of those. And I do not take too many brayers, again, for the weight per reason. And so here's the larger one. Here is the smaller one. My Galka gel, definitely always have that with me. I take one of these. I'll probably take two for the trip so that other people can try it out. My paints. Now, I don't take that many paints because weight, and it's just not necessary. I do demos, but even if you're a student, you just keep in mind you don't need that many paints. I would, you know, pick some cool colors, pick some warm colors, make sure you've got some glazing pigments, and and then some if you have some RNF pigment sticks, mark making tools like pencils and that sort of thing. Just keep in mind you don't have to have a lot of paint for a workshop. In a three or four day or five day workshop, it's not like you're going to go through a ton of paint. And by limiting your palette, you're going to actually find more freedom. At least that's what I've found. And this is a special eraser I like to show students. It's the sand eraser because um, it's a good way to get little bits of paint out of the borders of your painting once it's dry uh, to clean up the edges a little bit. And just various, you know, different kinds, the pink eraser, the, the sometimes I have a kneaded eraser in here. Here's an eyedropper for doing like a Gamsol lift. Um, just a, it's a glass eyedropper and then here's my razor blade so I will slip a cover over this okay so I have everything packed now in my bags and I'm just going to pop it into the suitcase and then weigh it so here goes My Vogue tab, two boxes, and there we go. And I just have this. I'm not even using the other half of my suitcase. I'm wondering if I forgot something. Um, sift that up. Hi, Vincent. You gonna help me weigh this? Are you, buddy? Okay, I get on the scale and. See where we're at. Okay, I can remember that number. It's nice and even. I'm right at 40.6 pounds. I'm 10 pounds under, which is a good healthy amount. So I think we're good. Yay, ready to go.